Hi, Nico from Voiceflow here. In this video, we will talk about prompt compression. Um, so a way to use less token. Um, mainly in, in that example, we will focus on um, compressing the chunks that we are passing to the LLM context. So I'm using a KB, I'm getting some chunks based on the user query, and I want to compress uh, as much as possible those chunks or the content of those chunks and then pass that to my LLM prompt and hopefully use uh, less token doing so. Uh, for this, we are going to use LLM Lingua 2. Um, I will share those. Um, so those link are available on our repo. Uh, you can see that there's some paper, then I, there is an access to their uh, uh, GitHub repository as well and uh, Hugging Face demo. The main goal here, again, is to compress. And um, what I've done here is based on that um, repository, and uh, you have a bunch of examples in there. Uh, again, we are focusing on using LLM Lingua 2, uh, and they're also sharing some example for that. So you can see here, uh, obviously, this is uh, uh, Python. But uh, what we've done here is um, creating, so on our repo, what we are sharing is a container that will run um, that Python code, but also using fast API to uh, allow access to uh, some endpoints, actually two endpoints. Uh, one is just for the, uh, uh, the Docker, um, we have a health endpoint, so it's just to be sure that everything is running uh, fine. And the other one is the compress endpoint. So, if we switch to the code quickly here, the main and the only uh, file uh, for this, for the code is that app.pi. Uh, and you can see we're using fast API and a bunch of uh, uh, library from the uh, LLM Lingua example. So the, again, the repo. What we've added here is that uh, health endpoint and the compress. So the compress waiting for uh, some uh, data and uh, original prompt, compression rate, etc. Um, and we are returning a result by, after using that uh, compress prompt LLM Lingua 2. Again, we are using LLM Lingua with that um, base model. Uh, you can change the model as well. Um, and, and this is available in their example. You can also set, as you can see here, uh, you can use the .env Everything is documented in the README. Uh, you can change the port and set the model you want to use for this. But the main goal here is basically let us use the compress endpoint, sending a request, getting some information from that, which are basically the compressed prompt, um, how many tokens was uh, before compression, after compression, the, re the ratio, and the rate. And that's pretty much it. The, um, I've also commented this. It's just that um, by default, if you test that locally, you might not want to use uh, SSL. But uh, if you put that on a server, uh, obviously, you want to uh, use some um, certificate here. So uh, the Docker file, we are using a 513.13. This is the Slim uh, image. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we are copying the requirements.txt. We are running a, a pip install and uh, running the app using Python. Docker compose, same thing here. The only thing is the uh, health check. Again, this is why we have that health endpoint, just to check that everything is uh, OK, because we want that to uh, be available um, at any time. And uh, yeah, so let's do a docker compose again i'm uh, doing this locally so obviously docker compose is running or docker desktop is running in the background and uh, for this to be available for our uh, voice flow agent i also need to share that uh, port so i'm using 3040 here this is what i've set in my dot env and it looks like everything is up and running we can uh, do a quick test here here we go, status OK. We can also uh, do a quick test with the compression. And yeah, it's working. So as you can see, this is the kind of uh, 
request we are sending, the text, will be the full chunks and um, with a compression rate, the value for that. Uh, I think in our demo we are using .6 um, and some force uh, tokens and the, the uh, chunk and token that do this. And in the response, we have that compressed prompt, the number of token, how many token have been compressed, the ratio and the rate. All right, so if we go back to our project, so this is the voice flow project that we are going to use. Um, pretty basic. Um, we are, we are, we have some uh, source here, some URL in that knowledge uh, knowledge base. Uh, this is just to show you that uh, query. Um, for the, the main agent, we are actually using another um, knowledge base. And this is doable by, again, using the uh, uh, KB query API and targeting that specific KB from a specific agent with uh, the corresponding DF API key. For this test, I'm using this local uh, KB, so the, the KB uh, for, for that agent. And it's, again, just to show you the data we, will, we are going to deal with. So the KB uh, query request is pretty simple. We have a question. So this is what we will capture using the capture step here. We set the chunk limits to six. This is only to show you um, to have a larger example. And uh, we are not using the synthesis because we don't want to use LLM yet. We just want to get uh, the chunks from that user query. And then we will compress the chunks and add that to the LLM context. So if we send that request, we can see that for OK and I auto open the chat widget, we get those uh, six chunks. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the limit we've set. And what's important here is the content can be pretty large sometime in those chunks. So this is where compression can be useful because what we're going to do is to compress that chunks array using our compression endpoint and hopefully use well less token that it should, but without um, changing that much the, the response, the quality of the response. So to be able to do that, we are again, uh, we are setting a bunch of uh, uh, variable in there. That's always a good practice because whenever uh, here, for example, as we've seen, I'm running this locally and I'm using uh, port R to target that temporary um, endpoint. So whatever I'm running here is available outside of my network. Um, and this is where I set that endpoint. But at any time, this can change when I'm doing local testing or dev. But ultimately, you want to set that to your main domain. And it's way easier to do this from here instead of going or try to find where this is, where this needs to be changed. Same thing with the IPI key or the AI getaway endpoint. We will see that a bit later. All right. So once we've captured the user question, we are doing what we are doing here in that demo, uh, that demo block. Um, creating a payload with the question will be the last utterance. Last utterance is whatever we are capturing here within the capture step. The chunk limit will be set to four. Um, and uh, again, we're not using the synthesis. All this is stringify before uh, we use that into the body for that request. And ultimately, we will target in the response that chunks array, and we will map that to the chunks variable. OK, if something goes wrong, uh, we tell the user, sorry, I don't have the answer. Obviously, you want to, uh, best, best practice will be to handle that um, in a better way. But for that demo, it's just a reminder that you obviously you don't want to have those failed uh, going nowhere, because that will end the conversation without letting the user know what, what's happening. So the compression part. What we need, again, we've seen that we also need to um, create a specific payload for that. Here we want for the text, 
we want the chunks, but again, the chunks coming from the KB query, um, it's an array, so we want to stringify that. Uh, compression rate will be .6. Uh, and for token, I think I've just put whatever uh, was in that uh, in their example. Uh, same for the chunk and tokens. Um, when we've set that, again, we stringify the payload and we use the compressed endpoint, which is wh whatever we've set in there. And in that case, this is this uh, URL to target my uh, running container locally. And um, same thing here, uh, but for we, we are capturing the full response. Uh, as we've seen uh, here, basically we will get all this. And then we will deal with that uh, object in the uh, next JavaScript step. So compression result dot compress prompt, we are mapping that to the compress prompt variable. We do the same for the origin tokens, compress tokens, compress ratio, compress rate. What we are doing is also in that saves tokens variable, we are uh, doing that uh, some math, just basically getting uh, how many token we've just saved for that request, origin token minus compressed token. Uh, we also uh, add those save token to the uh, total. Actually, we should do this. Here we go. Uh, and the total will be shared uh, before each response, because again, this is a demo, but we want to debug those values. And um, the, the full total uh, for each turns uh, will be uh, shown whenever we will stop that conversation. All right. Um, next thing is, so this uh, debug text where we are showing all the variable we've just populated in uh, that JavaScript step. This part is because we are going to use uh, GPT-40 and this is a Pretty new model. So what you want to be able to do is handle fullback. So if GPT.0, uh, 40 sorry, is not available, we will fall back and use GPT for turbo instead. And we can do this using, uh, this is, a, uh, again, this, this is something we've already talked about. In that case, we are using the uh, Cloudflare AI getaway. So let's talk about this a bit more. What Cloudflare allow you to do is to use the AI getaway. So that's this part. And um, this is free, by the way, uh, at least for now. And the interesting point is not only it supports multiple providers, so OpenAI, AgainFace, uh, Perplexity, uh, and Tropics for the uh, cloud models, but what we want to do here is use the universal, universal endpoint. Because as you can see here, uh, we can uh, add as many fallback as we need. And in our case, what we're doing is we are using GPT-4 Turbo as a fallback. So if this request didn't return anything or fails for any reason, we will then make another one with GPT-4 uh, Turbo. That makes sense. So same OpenAI key, same max token temperature. Everything is the same, only the model name will change here. And then, so we've, again, as always, we are passing a prompt uh, with the compressed prompt, the last utterance. That's basically what, what we need. We send that payload to the uh, AI getaway endpoint. So just to show you what it looks like, whenever you create a new getaway here on Cloudflare, uh, you can use that uh, endpoint. And uh, you can even cache uh, in the settings. You can use caching. Uh, but again, here, it's just mainly for the uh, the fallback. Uh, and you also have some analytics, uh, how many times you can see uh, the, the model as well here, GPT-40, uh, the number of token used and stuff like that. Okay, so once you're ready and you've set up your endpoints, we will send that payload with Again, everything we've populated right there. So LM system prompt. And hopefully we get an answer. 
And if that's not the case, if we can't have an enter based on the context we've shared, we will return um, no enter. This is exactly what we are looking for here uh, using this. If enter, which is the uh, variable we are populating with the response from the AI getaway, uh, if this is equal or contain, in that case, no enter, then we don't have an enter. So we'll let the user know. Otherwise, we are sharing the answer. So, yep, that's, uh, that's how we are basically using prompt compression as well as fallback uh, with the new um, OpenAI GPT-4.0 model. So now we are ready. We can run the test. How can I help? So, how can I add my agents to my uh, web page? So here, what we are doing, and again, keep in mind that I've set the chunks limit to four, uh, so we get way more chunks to play with, but also way more token to compress. And as you can see, origin and compress. So we've saved um, a bit more than 400 tokens. Um, and the total is what we've saved now, because that's the first turn. And as you can see, the response is uh, just fine. Uh, we get the link, we get uh, the uh, snippet code. And if I say, uh, how can I auto open the chart widget? Same thing here, fetching the chunks, compressing, and then returning uh, the response using GPT-4.0, or if GPT-4.0 is not available, um, we are using uh, full, doing a fallback to GPT-4 Turbo. Here we go, this is the response. Uh, and so the following code snippet, we have that timeout function with the chat open, everything is fine. Access to the dev doc uh, and some explanation about that delay. So all good. And uh, we are now, save, we have just saved 1000 tokens. So this turn was almost 600 tokens. And uh, yeah, we can keep going and say, um, how many tokens, uh, can I get with the pro plan, for example? And here, uh, seven half hundred stock in. So we are, um, again, uh, saving a total of uh, 1,700 uh, plus stock in. And we've got that response, which is Okay, the link, yeah, everything is good. So let's say, okay, bye. Um, and let's see how many token we've saved. Again, that's the total number of token uh, that we will be able to save using compression. So here we go. Uh, this is how you can use LLM Lingua to, to save or compress your, in that case, uh, context or the chunks. You can also use this with user question instruction to compress the prompt. If uh, your prompt are pretty large, that's also something you can do with LLM Lingua. So that's it for the video and uh, see you next time. Bye.